In the wake of Andrew Luck retiring, many fantasy owners are left scrambling for a new QB, and bargains are as valuable as ever. So I've come bearing a handful of bargain picks at the position to give you, fair viewer, options. When it comes to quarterbacks outside of the upper echelon of talents, it becomes less about the quarterbacks themselves and more about the weapons around them. Last year, I managed to get my hands on Baker Mayfield as my backup, and it served me swimmingly. I knew he'd be a thrifty investment because he was a rookie with a spread the ball around kind of play style combined with good weapons. Obviously, with additions like OBJ and Kareem Hunt, albeit midseason, Baker no longer qualifies for this list. But let's look into some of the under the radar quarterback options for this season. But first, this video is associated with Amazon.com, a great source for bargains on many things, NFL or otherwise. Don't forget, there will be 11 Thursday night games streamed on Amazon Prime, free to Prime members. Not a Prime member? I can help with that. Follow the link in the description and get your first 30 days free. Not a membership kind of person? That's cool too. Follow my link in the description and purchase an Amazon Fire Stick and I will show you how to stream your NFL games on there for free. That's right, free. Links in the description. First up, Kirk Cousins. Provided Minnesota retains their offensive coordinator again, this may be the last time Kirk appears on this list. Because at this point, we know what Kirk can do, we're all very familiar with his weapons. The Vikings have one of the best receiving duos in the league in Stephon Diggs and Adam Thielen. They have an above average tight end in Kyle Rudolph, and they're blessed by the return of running back Dalvin Cook. This has the makings of a potent, point producing offense regardless of who's under center, as Case Keenum demonstrated for us a couple seasons ago. If they can get Kirk back to managing the game as opposed to trying to own it, in other words, getting him to be less of what Skip Bayless calls an underconfident overachiever, the points will practically produce themselves. Up next, Nick Foles. So what has escaped notice for the last couple of years is that Jacksonville has quietly assembled a deep, talented, and largely underrated room of receivers. While there is not a single obvious superstar in the bunch, the overall collection of pass catchers is arguably better than most would want to admit. Marquise Lee, who missed the entire 2018 season after requiring surgery to repair several ligaments, including a previously torn PCL in his left knee, has returned. Before the injury, he was emerging as the top target in the offense. Beyond him, Keelan Cole had what was close to the catch of the year last season, and Dede Westbrook is appearing to come into focus as Nick Foles' favorite target. Not to mention, the 2018 second round draft pick DJ Chark returns for his second season. Although he suffered a concussion in the third preseason game, I'm sure he'll be back in time for week one. Additionally, this room also features familiar names like Chris Conley, formerly of Kansas City, and Terrell Pryor, although one of them may not make the roster by the end of cuts. Like I said, the group is deep. Couple that with a consistent ground game and you have the makings of a pretty productive season for Nick Foles. Marcus Mariota and Ryan Tannehill. I listed both because Mariota has a tendency to get hurt and Tanny is an above average backup and may need to be considered a handcuff if you're thinking of rolling with Mariota. Their receiving core is nothing to write home about, but overall, they're very solid. Adam Humphreys and Corey Davis are decent options, and the roster also features running back Derrick Henry and dual threat running back Deion Lewis, who's a capable receiver out of the backfield. And of course, they still have Delaney Walker. All in all, there's points there that others may overlook. Andy Dalton. This soon to be 32 year old quarterback basically epitomizes this list. He's been fading away for years and should not be counted on to carry any team, fantasy or otherwise. However, his weapons make him worth a look. We're familiar with AJ Green and Tyler Boyd, but they are also joined by speedster John Ross in the slot. At tight end, they have Tyler Eifert and behind him, CJ Azuma. 
both of which, based on the preseason, will be getting schemed wide open. This could make the position very fruitful for the Bengals. And then of course, Joe Mixon and Giovanni Bernard. Mixon has already shown he too can be a receiving threat out of the backfield, and I don't expect that to change under new head coach Zach Taylor. Altogether, they make Andy Dalton a relatively attractive, low-risk, high-reward type of quarterback. Jameis Winston. This former first overall pick is in a pivotal year. While he has flashed at times, he has never quite lived up to his draft status and has had a tendency to turn the ball over. He now has a new head coach, a new offense, and a fair amount of weapons. While they did lose Deshaun Jackson, they still have two-time Pro Bowler Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, who many expect a breakout season from, and Brashad Perriman. Additionally, the offense features not one, but two reliable pass-catching tight ends in O.J. Howard and Cameron Brait. Expect the ball to be flying around quite a bit in this vertical offense, especially as they may struggle to get a consistent run game going early on. Derek Carr. It cannot be argued that in many ways Derek Carr took a step back last season although he did throw for over 4,000 yards for the first time in his NFL career. This year, he gets a special new weapon in the form of Antonio Brown. I need not explain why that's special. I will suffice to say that he adds a lot and will be supported by fellow receivers Tyrell Williams, who's pretty good, and rookie Hunter Renfro, who deservedly fought his way to the starting lineup. Without reliable tight ends and without knowing how effective the ground game will be, it's pretty safe to wonder if Derek may have to shoulder the load for a while, and that will make him and his receivers fairly valuable. And finally, Jacoby Brissett. With Andrew Luck's sudden retirement, the team will hand the reins to this former Patriot backup. He has been serviceable in the offense in the past, and now has had an entire offseason in it. He's shown he's more than capable in the preseason and comes with a decent arsenal. T.Y. Hilton is a reliable target and will be opposite Devin Funches, formerly of Carolina. They will also feature a rookie, Paris Campbell, whom many were claiming was poised to break out and, of course, two good tight ends. Expectations should be tempered for as good as Brissett is and possibly could be, he's not Andrew Luck. Anyways, that will do it for this video. But I'm going to be doing this all season long, so if you're not yet subscribed, do it! <laughs> mash that fucker through the screen of your phone and ding the bell to make sure that you're not missing out on gaining the edge over your fantasy league. Remember to check the description for links to your 30 day free trial of Amazon Prime, your Fire Stick, and great deals on various other shit. I'll see you real soon. Thanks for watching.